Hello everyone and welcome to another Robotics 101 video. Last episode we talked about angular motion and in this episode we're going to talk about linear motion. Linear motion is very similar to angular motion except for we're concerned with moving along a linear plane rather than a rotational plane. So let's talk about some of the different types of linear motion. Linear motion can have a lot of different applications and we typically see it in either like a CNC application or something like the XY table on this laser. If I lift up the top here you can actually see that the laser assembly actually moves like this along a linear plane. The idea here is that we have a motor driving some kind of belt or some kind of um, screw mechanism that actually allows us to move on a flat XY linear plane. The main difference between angular motion and linear motion is in its implementation. Angular motion is relatively simple to implement. You just have a motor, you have some sort of shaft, and you have some sort of rotational device like a wheel, a gog, a pulley, belt, sprocket, whatever. However, with linear motion, there's a lot more specialized components that go into making some sort of linear slider. And we're going to show you a couple different examples using the Actobotics products. Here we've got a simple slider setup that we've put together to show you linear motion using Actobotics components. We've got a 24 inch aluminum channel, we've got a motor with a motor mount, a couple other pieces, a timing pulley, and then we've got a timing belt stretched across the whole thing, and then we have one of these channel sliders. Actobotics actually has seven different channel sliders, and I'm going to show you how to use each and every one and what their purpose is. So this is the A slider. As you can see, the A slider completely encompasses the entire channel. So it actually slides on there like this, and it hooks on at the bottom, and we have this piece that slides the length of the channel. The A is actually the biggest one, and so it actually grabs all the way around the whole channel, so it's going to have the most resistance to it, as you can see. The other thing to mention about all of the channel sliders is that I've got these pieces connected on the inside with the 632 socket caps, and you can see that it easily clears the head of the screws, and it will do this on all sides, so you don't have to worry about if you're connecting something in that the slider will hang up and knock into those. The next two are the B and the C. Although they look similar, they're slightly different. The first one here is the B, and it actually mounts on a channel like so. It has a mount at the very top of the channel, whereas the C actually hangs down below the opposite way. So if you need to connect something to the top of the channel, you would want to use the B, but if you'd want to use something on the bottom of the channel, you'd actually use the C. Another note about all these channel sliders is they come just as the two plastic plates. These are actually made out of Delrin, which is a plastic material that has a nice um, slide to it, and they come just as the two pieces. So what you're going to want to do is actually pick up either some of these quad hubs, or as we did with the A slider, is you can also use the standoffs. You can also use the channel itself to mount these and have a channel sliding on another channel. Next up we've got channel slider D. D is a little bit different in that it actually only hooks onto the bottom and the side. So you can see it has these two little hooks that hook onto the top of the channel and it just hangs off the side like that. Now this one, since it's only hooking on the top and the side, has a lot less resistance to it because it's not actually cupping all the way around the channel. Another thing to note about the channels is when you get a channel of this length, or even some of the slightly smaller ones, there's going to be some variability in the width. So it might be a little bit thinner or a little bit thicker in all of these places. And what you can do is if you have a place that binds up a little bit, you can actually spread it out or squeeze it in a little bit and get a much smoother slide like that. The last three sliders are E, F, and G. They all have just one contact point, which is just the top, the side, or the bottom. So this first one actually just mounts on the top like this. It does not hook in at all, so it can just fall right off. So this is used where you would have maybe the channel mounted to a flat surface and you just had something gliding along the top like that. The F is very similar, except for the F actually hooks onto the side and hangs off the side like this. So very similar to the E, except for it actually hangs off the side. The thing to note about the E is it actually does not have a hook on the bottom, it just kind of hangs down off of the lip like that. 
the G actually mounts directly on the bottom of the channel like that. So if you flip this over, you can see that it just slides along the bottom of the channel. And just like the other two, it doesn't really have any hooking or latching mechanism, so it can just kind of come right off. But it has these little lips on the side that allow it to slide pretty readily along the bottom of the channel. The other Actobiotic products I wanted to talk about in relation to linear motion are the dolly wheel plates. There's two different types. Um, this one is actually a built up of the drive wheel plate set. And then this one right here is actually the idler plate set. They come just like the sliders in these two laser cut pieces. The main difference between the idler and the drive wheel is that the idler is made for wheels just with bearings on them. So you just attach the skate wheels and they freely spin. Whereas with the drive, it actually has more attachment points to where you can actually attach a motor and you can actually have a drive wheel. So ideally what you would do is you would have, let's say, some one inch tube and you'd have two of these rails, you'd have one drive here and you'd have an idler at the other side and you could have a little mechanism that would travel up and down the one inch channel like this. This concludes our discussion about linear motion. Linear motion is pretty cool and it's useful in a lot of different applications from CNC, laser cutters, rep wraps, 3D printers, all that good stuff. The Actobotics has a couple elegant solutions for achieving linear motion, but there's a lot of different ways to do things if you want to start getting into screw rods and things like that. A lot of different ways to accomplish it. So now we've covered angular motion, linear motion, and the introduction to robotics. Let's move on next week into transfer of motion, where we'll talk about gears, pulleys, and all the other ways to transfer motion from one place to another. See you next week.